Hey guys, today's task is uh, to set up some PoE splitters. Uh, what you see here are a few NanoPi Neos. Uh, we got the Neo 2 Black and the Neo 3. And then there's also a Raspberry Pi 2, I think? Anyways, these are three different uh, PoE splitters. There's a gigabit uh, micro USB. There's a gigabit USB-C. And then there's a 10100 uh, micro USB. Um, they're all plugged into a Cisco 2960S switch. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, somebody was asking, could a specific device be powered off these things? And in that case, I believe it was a NanoPi 2. Anyway, or a NanoPi Neo 2. And that's the one in the uh, the bottom with the o uh, OLED screen. All right, and because I can, let's show off uh, what it looks like in a Cisco switch. So to see the poe devices on here you do a show power in line and you can see the total available watts is 740 on this particular switch it's using 46.2 with 693.8 remaining um, of course i picked the uh, very end port so let's go through all of these All right, and you can see that these are class four, according to this, and pulling 15.4 watts. Now, these don't do any kind of negotiation to uh, change their wattage, so this is just what it's gonna give out. Um, the max for each of my ports is uh, 30, because I think this is uh, 802.3 AT, uh, but all of these devices, uh, or these um, PoE splitters that I use are 802.3 AF. One more thing that I'd like to do is let's pull up a browser and because I'm running nano uh, a WLAN Pi, let's see if I have that. There we go. So what this is is it's a speed test that runs on uh, WLAN Pi. That's the uh, not the operating system that I have on one of these, but it, it's the package that's running on the Neo 2 Black. Anyway, we'll we'll run a speed test just to show that we get full gigabit through these uh, PoE injectors or uh, sorry, PoE splitters. All right, that's close enough. Um, I think iPerf would have been a better test, but anyways, th th it works. And I get good enough speed through it that I I'm happy. All right, let's go plug in a couple of other devices. All right, I swapped out the NanoPi Neo 2 and also pulled out the Raspberry Pi and replaced them with a NanoPi Neo and a NanoPi R2S. And you can see my switch noticed that I took them all down. Um, let's see if we can show the log. Because we should see it pull power. Let's see if it shows that in the log. I may not be logging that. I am not. Actually, it would show power if I had unplugged the uh, uh, network cable, I believe. Let's go check. There it is. So now we see that the power was granted or was detected and then granted. So I did a, sh I'm, I'm getting flooded because I didn't turn off logging, uh, console logging. There we go. Show power inline, pipe include on, and we see our three devices still on there. Now when you just pull the network cable out, it's still providing power to the splitter. 
So you do have to pull it completely out. Let's see if we can uh, shut one of those guys down. I don't see any lights. Let me go find one with a light on it. All right, I'm gonna guess that it's port 47. Let's find out. Oh, by the way, we're looking at the uh, top one, the R2S. We should see the lights go out. There they go. It's a really easy way to reboot the device. Hopefully that should stop us from being interrupted. All right. So there it is. Show power inline pipe include on. So we see them all up. That's all there is to it. I haven't found a device that these aren't able to power yet. Um, they are uh, 5 volt, 2.4 amp each. Um, there is a different model. That's the 802.3 AT that I think does 4 amp so it would be able to um, possibly power the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 I don't have any on or any Raspberry Pi 4s which is why I didn't purchase that model um, these all range from about 10 bucks to 15 bucks each I think um, literally just got them so I could test them out anyways I hope you guys found this useful if so give it a thumbs up